The Denver Broncos lose in rough fashion in overtime on Thursday night football against the Indianapolis Colts, often attributed to Russell Wilson's struggles. Where do the Broncos go from here? Plus, injuries continue to mount for this Broncos football team. Plus, an update on Garrett Bowles. You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format or whether you watch us on YouTube. Do us a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news content coverage every day, all year long. We have you covered from the South Stands to the End Zone. I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Joined alongside as always by my co-host, Sarah Bedinger, site expert, predominantly orange. Dot com. Sarah, Thursday night football. I mean, we've had our discussions about it in general. You and I are on the same page from a player safety standpoint, but this was quite arguably on Thursday night against the Colts. This was probably one of the worst football games I think I've seen in quite some time. When we talk about offensive performances on both sides of the ball, the Broncos lose ugly at home and just an accumulation snowball effect. And as our good friend Emmanuel Sanders would say, a world of suck. The world of suck, Cody. We have re-entered, if as if we ever left, I guess. Right? We kind of are like card-carrying pass holders to the world of suck at this point. It, it's just tough to watch. It really is. I mean, I, I was texting you throughout the game. I have a number of other people that I text throughout Broncos games, and I try to not, you know, text or tweet, you know, as much during games anymore as I used to because you tend to get so emotionally reactive, but. Man, I'll say this is the first time, Cody, in a long time that I just had to like, I had to go take a walk after this game. Just like you said, it was so bad from start to finish. And really, it it, had nothing to do with the Denver Broncos defense. Like, that was fun to watch. I I love watching great pass rush. I love turnovers, things like that. And you get to see the defense out there making big plays. But there was one point in the game right before Brandon McManus missed or got a, a field goal blocked, Cody, in this game that. I, I literally left. I left the the room because I was like, I don't even want to see what's about to happen right here. I know I knew it was fourth down, and I was like, I don't even want to know what's about to happen. And sure enough, I come back, and it was still 6-6. Six to six. It was one of those nights for the Denver Broncos on offense. Once again, after five games, we've seen this, Cody, the same thing every single week. The offense, Sarah, to be honest with you, it is a house of horrors right now, and Russell Wilson is not playing good right now. The offense is not flowing. They're not executing good right now, and you figure that you know this would be an opportunity in this game, coming into this game, that Denver would have a chance to maybe do something against a team like the Colts that have struggled. I mean, this was a team where Denver just simply couldn't take advantage, and granted, you know, both teams did not practice much this week they had walkthroughs because you just played a game on Sunday we'll talk about that a little bit later but the offensive house of horrors continues here for the Broncos in a combination of execution play calling and quarterback play and offensive line play I mean there's a trickle down effect at almost every level for this Broncos offense that Sarah I mean it was it was so hard to watch and being up there in the press box watching it and just the boo birds every time the Broncos can't do anything like the boo birds at Empire Field in Mile High They were loud, but here's why. The Broncos' third down struggles continue. Once again, penalties, long field positions were a continuous story once again for the fifth consecutive week of this Broncos season. Two of 15 on third down. Sarah, not efficient. And, I mean, it's just to the point where opposing defenses are just playing, forcing Denver to pass the football like they want them to. They're going to go sell out against the run and say, hey, Denver, throw the ball. And it's working. It is, and it's unfortunate to see because obviously the Broncos paid a lot of money to get Russell Wilson in the fold. They traded a lot to get him in the fold, and you know there's a lot of people really bickering about that on Twitter, Cody, and I understand that. I get that. It certainly adds to the frustration to know that, hey, you've really tied yourself to this investment. It's not just a let's kind of see what happens, but yeah, this game really was. I think over the first four games, I think you really could pinpoint a lot of other different things besides Russell Wilson as the reason why the Broncos primary reason why the Broncos offense didn't look good. 
But in this game, Cody, two interceptions from Russ. One of them was kind of just uh, – it, it looked like he was trying to make a play. He just kind of heaved the ball downfield. But the second one, Cody – the second one was kind of like a betrayal of a friend. It, it kind of just felt like, man, like I can't believe he just did that. I can't believe he just said that. I can't believe they just texted me that. You know, it was Russell Wilson trying to force that ball to Tyree Cleveland when the game was really won, right? You force the Colts to take their timeouts. You get the, the ball into the red zone and field goal range clearly with less than two minutes to play. And you try to force a ball to Tyree Cleveland in coverage against Stephon Gilmore and the ball's late. It's behind him. Those two interceptions, Cody, the second one in particular, the first one, it was kind of just like, wow, that was uncharacteristic, but like, okay, let's, you know, the defense got the ball back. The second one was, was really where I, I kind of felt it, it was a little almost like personal. I know it wasn't personal on Russ's behalf, but you can't help but wonder why is he trying to do so much in that moment? What is he trying to prove? And, and what's the reasoning for that? It was just so, out of character it was so out of place and it was just it, it just felt so wrong even in the moment I mean it was backbreaking and you know you took the words right from my mouth I mean it was a moment where you're forcing the Colts to use their timeouts all you have to do is just maybe I don't know in a situation like that run the football kick a get, kick a field goal to extend your lead or like bring the clock down you know to the final seconds and then kick a field goal and end the game and then all of a sudden no one's talking about like okay hey the Broncos lose an ugly game and you know unfortunately it's just that interception set it up to where the Colts could go down the field and look this was a war of attrition the Broncos defense contrary to what many people are going to say I think a lot of people are going to be focused on the result the Broncos defense did their job a majority of the night you know the issue they were on the field way too much because the Broncos mm -hmm. offense simply couldn't keep them off the field. They would go three and out. They would have plays where they go backwards. And all of a sudden, you know, the defense is maybe getting one or two plays off, three plays off in total before they're having to get right back there on the football field. Can't have it. The offense let the Broncos defense down in a big way in this game and just more insult to injury. A lot of it, too, has raised some questions about Russell Wilson in the eyes of Broncos country. We'll talk about Russell Wilson's performance coming up here in just a moment, Broncos country. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos Post Game Report. That's our good friends over there at Simply Safe. And all right, here's a sports analogy for you. When it comes to burglars, your home is like the end zone, and you need the absolute strongest defense that you can muster. This is why I use and trust Simply Safe Home Security. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters, and it's cutting edge technology powered by 20. 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. So you always know that your home is safe. And with 24 7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe's agents call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not at home or can't be reached. Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. HD security cameras for inside and outside your home. Smarter ways to detect motion that only alerts you when a threat is real. And even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit Simply SimplySafe.com slash LockedOnNFL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Russell Wilson has turned in his worst performance so far to date as a Denver Bronco, and the Broncos offense really struggled in a disappointing home loss Thursday night football. Thank you so much, Broncos country, once again for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. We appreciate you so much. One thing to keep in mind, even though you are frustrated, and rightfully so, Broncos fans, you have every right to be mad, frustrated, irritated, upset about the Broncos' loss. However, please be respectful with one another in the YouTube comment sections. Be respectful with each other on Twitter. Keep everything civil here. We don't. It, this is the one thing I'd say, Sarah, that is like the most frustrating thing about being a beat reporter and covering a team, providing media outlets there. It's just you see so much toxicity amongst the fan base, amongst each other. Everyone's attacking each other when things are bad, and uh, that's not what being a fan's about. So, folks, you get 24 hours to feel how you're feeling, to feel frustrated, to vent, but then after that, let it pass. And hey, you know what? It's football. You got to keep moving on. And that's what Russell Wilson is hoping to do. Now, he met with the media after the game at the podium, and he said that he feels like he let his teammates down. He feels like, you know, this one's on him and that he needs to respond, and he believes that he will. Sarah, I think at this point, though, too, right? You know, as much as Russell Wilson, I feel like when he speaks, can 
maybe bring some sense of calm amongst the situation. I think the bigger thing here that Broncos country is now looking at actions speak a lot louder than words. They do, and the actions need to reflect in the play on the field, the product on the field. We finally, early in this game, we started to see Russ running a little bit more than we were used to seeing. You know, he had the big run early on off to his left, and it was great to see those kind of things, and there were great things throughout this game. Of course, there were some big plays from some of the guys on the offense, notably guys like, you know, Mike Boone stepping up on a couple opportunities. He was given Melvin Gordon even stepping up in this game as well, Cody, but really – Russell Wilson, this game just felt like he was trying to do way too much. And and no offensive rhythm at all is what we have in the show notes. I think that's exactly what it is. You know, Nathaniel Hackett was asked about that at halftime. And I don't know if the Broncos can quite figure this out between Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson right now. They just don't seem to be able to get on the same page. And like after the first couple weeks, it was kind of like, well, you know, maybe it's the new head coach, new QB dynamic, and they just need time. But now here we are, we're five games in, and I realize this was a short week against the Colts are a respectable defense, not you know, not, not having Shaquille Leonard, but at the same time, a, a good defense nonetheless with some really good players at all three levels. I you Even acknowledging that, didn't it just feel like this was just not, it wasn't the norm in terms of the struggles that we've been used to seeing. Like I think throughout the first four games, we could accurately say, well, it feels like, you know, Nathaniel Hackett should be calling the game like this, or it feels like, you know, the running game should be doing this, or the offensive line isn't doing this. And this game in particular, the fact that we can now pinpoint this game on Russell Wilson, I think is why you're seeing a lot of Broncos country on Twitter going so ballistic right now, because it, it up to this point, it hasn't been just Russ. Like there's been signs that maybe, yeah, maybe Russ should have had he, he like this throwback or whatnot, but in this particular game, the missed touchdown to Jerry Judy when he was working from the slot and Russ just put he, – he didn't put enough air on the ball down there near the end zone. The brutal interceptions that we already talked about, Hamler being wide open on the final play of the game, it just felt different this time around. It, it, and it kind of goes back to what you said. feels like Russ tried to do a little too much, right? And I don't think that with the personnel that Denver has around, I don't think he needs to try to do too much. You know, we even saw Eric Sauber getting involved a little bit. Russ would finish the game 21 of 39 passing for 274 yards and two interceptions. Obviously not good enough, but he was also sacked four times. And there has been a little bit of a trend where, yes, he is holding the ball a little too long on some instances. But he's also, in some of those instances, we've seen him create opportunities for the offense there. And and to be honest with you, Sarah, I I just, I don't know necessarily where they go from here. Right. And I think that, you know, we have, we have a bunch of fans are like, Oh, I can't wait to see how you guys try to be optimistic about this team on the post game report. Like, here's the deal. Like we, we don't try to be overly optimistic for, you know, for any reason we don't, we're not overly negative. We process everything and we just think about solution based, you know, kind of resolutions here for this team. And to be honest with you, Sarah, it's like, with the offense struggling the way it has through five total weeks of the season, and the, the most gleaming statistic that stood out to me in the first half, Denver had only 103 total yards of offense at halftime. That's inexcusable. You can't have that. So many missed opportunities. And it's crazy because a majority of that yardage came on that very first drive, which is wild. 49 yards came on that first drive for the Broncos where McManus kicked a field goal. It's just wild. We haven't seen anything like that in quite some time. And and who would have thought that with the Broncos often struggling the way it did, that for some reason Drew Locke would be trending on Twitter. It's because Broncos country's frustrated. (laughs) And you know what? We saw the Broncos offense doing a little bit more, you know, with guys like Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke at one point. Not saying that those, you know, they should have never made that move, but it's just weird to see Russell Wilson, an offense led by him and the people around him, that it's not doing anything. And I think that's the most concerning part because, Sarah, you and I talked about this. This offensive performance completely wasted a very, very good defensive performance that realistically the Broncos should have blown out the Colts. If the offense could score, the defense would have done their part. I mean, six and a half total sacks for this Broncos defense. Baron Browning looked unbelievable. Bradley Chubb looked unbelievable. Draymond Jones looked unbelievable. Alex Singleton stepping in once again looked unbelievable. So many missed opportunities here by the offense that it completely negates anything that the defense did because the Broncos lost and nobody's focused on the defense. They're all mad about the offense, and rightfully so. It's one of those moments where we go, Broncos country, let's cry. Broncos country, let's cry. I I, I mean, 
Uh, you're exactly right, Cody. You're absolutely right. It's a wasted defensive performance. And really, you can't necessarily even just focus on the good. Like, I, I feel so much more comfortable when the defense is out there. You almost you almost wanted the, the Colts to not quite go three and out every single time they had the ball. Maybe pick up a first down to, to keep the ball away from the offense and maybe increase your chances at a defensive touchdown. I mean, was, I was honestly thinking that at one point in the game. Like, man, if the Colts could just – get you know a couple yards here they get another first down maybe the defense will pick off another pass and take it back to the house this time or maybe you know Matt Ryan's fumble won't bounce right into his arms or his offensive lineman's arms this time and and the Broncos will recover it and take it for a touchdown you just felt that kind of vibe from the offense in this game just zero confidence whatsoever and really Cody the biggest problem to me is the fact that when they get into the red zone I mean, it, it's it's not even it's not a, it's not funny anymore. It's no. just not it's it's not a, the punchline of a joke. It's not like a uh, oh well they'll figure it out in the next game. It's like man, like they legitimately cannot score in the red zone. They suck in the red zone. Yeah. Can I say that they yeah. they just flat out <laughs> suck. Yeah, and it, and it's so it's so hard to watch because like I'm sitting there. My brother comes home late to watch the end of this game, and I'm like, watch this. They they just got into the red zone. The same thing has happened the entirety of this game. And and literally, we saw it unfold in real time. It was amazing. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I was trying to convince myself, like, man, I'll do 100 push-ups if they don't score a touchdown this time. Or, like, I'm going to keep walking. Or I'm going to change the way I'm sitting so they score this time. Trust me, Broncos country, like, yes, I, I love being optimistic. And I, I don't necessarily want to say I spin things. But like Cody said, we always try to think of solution-based reasons you know to come up with why the broncos can maybe ride the ship but we're, we're in the same boat as as everyone listening everyone watching we're watching this and getting frustrated and we we don't understand exactly what the broncos are going to do about this or what they even can do but man it's certainly concerning these defensive performances getting wasted nobody's talking about the defense yeah. everybody's talking about russell wilson and unfortunately right now everybody's laughing yeah and you know what and we'll even kind of close the offensive portion of the show by really highlighting I mean fourth and one I, I get that you want to try to win the game I just don't understand I do you not have faith that you can't get at least one yard in a in a moment where the game is on the line right because guess what you get the first down you have a you know three more downs to work with and then you can maybe go for it and try to go for the win at that point I, I just Felt like there were so many missed opportunities, and even like for a guy like Melvin Gordon, redemption to be able to win the game in overtime after really kind of what he went through last week. Uh, it just it, it's just man, the offense is so rough to watch, and you know I I feel like Broncos fans too, and like a, this is a different post game report because you know we, I think we're just kind of feeling like you know for, as a reporter I'm just like man, it's frustrating to watch. I have a headache. Like it's late at night, Sarah. We're recording this post game podcast after the game. I just got back from the stadium. My head hurts because of it. It was frustrating to watch. But you know what? Th this is football. Now all you have to do is continue to go back to practice, continue to grind and to get better. But I'll be very intrigued to see what George Payton does this week and maybe what the offense does, what Nathaniel Hackett does, because something's not working and they're going to have to figure something out. And that is a huge question because now the Broncos will play the Los Angeles Chargers Monday Night Football in just about a week and a half from now. But Broncos country, coming up here in just a moment, we got to talk about something serious. Unfortunately, injuries and big-time injuries have impacted the Broncos yet again in Thursday night football. We have an update on Garrett Bulls and his status. How long will he be out? And also an update on some other players. We get to that coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, let me tell you about BetOnline.net. And BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game that you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. They're also the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Injuries continue to plague the Denver Broncos, and we call it the bad news Broncos as they suffer injuries to key players and could be without some big-time players for the next couple of weeks and potentially for the season. Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to the Lockdown Broncos post-game report, win or loss. You know we have you covered here every single day, all year long, in your favorite audio podcasting platforms or whether you watch on YouTube. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us here for this Broncos post-game therapy session. Sarah, 
Injuries, once again, not only impacted the Denver Broncos, who were already banged up coming to this matchup, the Indianapolis Colts as well. Not really on the very second play of the game, we saw Colts running back Naheem Hines go out with yet another scary concussion-based injury that we've seen two consecutive weeks in a row. For me, before we dive really into Garrett Bull's injury, Josie Jewell, Ronald Darby, I just I, I want to vent about the NFL here because the NFL preaches that they value player safety, yet they make players for two teams that just played physical games just three and a half days prior come through and play another game on Thursday Night Football. The product, I would say, sir, shows. What we've seen on Thursday Night mm-hmm. Football, the product shows. But we're also seeing so many more players get hurt. The Colts lost several players in this game, including Quiddy Pay to a, a pretty serious leg injury. The Broncos lost some key players as well, including Garrett Bowles, with what has now been reported by our good friend Mike Kliss. Garrett Bowles broke his leg, and the Broncos' overtime loss 12-9 to the Indianapolis Colts, and he had to be carted off, and he was in a lot of pain as well. The one thing that Kliss is reporting, though, is he's out at least six weeks, potentially more, so we'll see what happens. Sometimes when you have leg breaks, you can get surgery, or you can cast it and see if it heals. It's just a big blow, losing a guy like Garrett Bowles in the offensive end. Now, granted, he's had his fair shares of ups and downs so far this season. Still losing a starter at left tackle, your solidified guy, it's hard to overcome. And right now, it just makes the odds and the, the outlook on the Broncos look even more gloomy. It does. I mean, it's certainly long-term injuries to all these players that the Broncos are, have had to deal with in recent weeks, right? I mean, it, it just it, it keeps piling on. Javante Williams, Randy Gregory, now Garrett Bowles. And obviously, having a broken leg, Cody, I've never heard of a broken leg healing in six weeks. That would be crazy. Maybe borderline miraculous in my eyes, but I'm not a doctor, so I don't know anything. But that sounds really like an optimistic timeline. I feel like a lot of times, guys, you know, you break your leg, you're out for the year. That's kind of what I thought. But if six weeks, that would be awesome. But in the meantime, I mean, it's probably going to be Calvin Anderson out there. Like, I know Billy Turner has played left tackle before, but even being active in this game against the Colts, he didn't play. So I don't know where the Broncos are at with him, and I don't know where they're going to be. But Calvin Anderson stepped in, and he's – frankly played a lot better at left tackle than he has when he's gotten opportunities at right tackle. So he may be in a position there to kind of have a big impact, you know, at least for his professional career, if he can go out and play well. And then obviously we mentioned names, Josie Jewell, Ronald Darby, both leaving this game with knee injuries. Josie Jewell obviously had the calf injury earlier. Ronald Darby, he's kind of known, you know, throughout his career for being oft injured, but you hate to see this. He's playing so well, early on this season the extent of those guys injuries we're not sure yet but hopefully short term we also saw baron browning leave this game after re kind of re-injuring that wrist that he has treated but he said he's going to be okay so there's a lot of injury stuff to unpack for both of these teams for sure well and that's the thing too and and nathaniel hackett in his post-game press conference said that you know josie and ronald they have knees that we hope are not serious i mean that was a, a gleaming update, I guess. You know, we, we got a little bit more optimism on that. Saw Josie and Ronald Darby in the locker room after the game. You know, I d- didn't want to go up to them and ask, you know, hey, how are you doing, things like that. Um, you know, but they were moving around, and so we'll see. We'll get, you know, further evaluation. We'll hear from Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett on what the extent of those injuries are. Baron Browning, who had himself a really good game. Man, I tell you what, Baron and Bradley Chubb together, Sarah, those guys are very special. And – there's things that Barron has, and I know that people – look, I'm not comparing him to Von Miller, but I'm just saying when you, if you were to cover up his number and you were to watch the way that he moves, you would, have think, you would have thought that Von Miller was playing football for the Denver Broncos again with, like, the movements, the bend that we see, the get-off, and just even, like, the sack celebrations too. It's like, hey, is that Von Miller? Like, no, it's not. That's Barron Browning, and he's a freak, a freak athlete. But, you know, he was telling people after the game that he's good, so I have a lot more optimism there. That's some good news, but the Broncos will also have about 10 days here, Sarah, to get guys fully healthy for Monday Night Football against Justin Herbert and the Los Angeles Chargers. Rough game. Rough game. Disappointing game. Broncos country, every right to be frustrated. Don't take out your frustration on Sarah or myself. Don't take your frustration out on other Broncos fans. Vent about what's got you frustrated, but don't make it personal. And that's the thing I think that nobody understands or realizes on social media. Like, I've had to mute a lot of people, and I don't like that. I love interacting with Broncos country, but when I get people dropping F-bombs and telling me F you, like, I'm like, what, do, what are we doing here? What are we do? I'm just trying to provide right. as much information right. as I can. Sarah, you and I are trying to provide objective coverage of this team every single day, and I get the losing is frustrating. 
But folks, don't take it out on us. We're trying to do our best to give you, you know, as close coverage as you can. You know, whether you're you live in Colorado, whether you're watching on TV, whether you go to the games, but you want to hear a little bit more and so say like what's going on behind the scenes. That's where we come in and we appreciate the interaction. But you know, hey, try to keep things respectful, Broncos country. I get it. It's tough. Things are rough right now. But you know what? The thing I love about football, and this is true to my roots as a former coach, as a former player. Even when you're losing, when you lose games, you have disappointing losses. The only thing you can do, five weeks through the season, with so much football left to be played, all you can do is go back out there, practice, prepare, and grind your hardest to try to get a victory. And that's what the Broncos are going to do. That's what players in the locker room were talking about, that they've got to fix things. And you know what? We'll see if they can do it. And the biggest thing this week, Sarah, is going to be, Actions speak louder than words, and Broncos country will have you covered every step of the way here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy Sunday with commercial-free football, NFL, Red Zone. Relax. Get away a little bit. You know we'll have you covered here every single day. Locked on Broncos. Free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. Or whether you watch on YouTube, Broncos country. We'll see you next time.